big sound in a small town Far away from the big city lights Making music every night Good music with all our friends Tell everybody, tell your mama and them We're going out and we're getting down A big sound in a small town 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 And welcome to Big Sound Small Town. I'm your host, Sandy Carlton. And this is a podcast about the lives and stories of the musicians, writers, artists, and their associates that have their roots in the small towns and communities across America. If you like what you hear, tell somebody. Enjoy. Sandy today to talk a little bit and let y'all find out who I am. Well, thanks for being here, Jamie. Take time out of your busy schedule to be here. It means a lot to me. Uh, what's going on in the world with uh, Wiregrass these days? Well, you know, it was slow for a while. Um, we played up until March, and then all this COVID stuff came around, and we sat idle till about June where we had a a couple of gigs and I think we pretty much played maybe one or two gigs in July. August was kind of dry and then September, October, and November we had a bunch of winery gigs scheduled and they were all outside and socially distanced and uh, about two weeks ago we kind of wrapped it up for this year. Yeah, that's, that's good. I mean, so many people I've talked to hadn't had that much, you know, so that's actually good. During that time, did y'all practice or get together? We didn't. We really didn't. We've been playing together so yeah, long. Yeah, y'all have. I mean, that wouldn't necessarily be. That uh, we we talk about, you know, having rehearsals, but 
gosh, we've we've been together as a band for over nine years now. Yeah. And uh, so we we pretty much know we we forget songs that we yeah. used to play, and we'll pull one you know a few of those back up to keep it fresh. And you got a pretty big repertoire at this point. We do, you we know? do, we really do. Because I've I've seen you play, and it wasn't the same. <laughs> You know, you didn't do the same stuff over and over. Well, we start with the same first song and we end with oh, the yeah. same last We're song. We're kind of that way with Cleco, too. <laughs> it's a good, more of a jinx thing for us. Something blows up if we don't start with the same song. But uh, uh, It kind of helps you get warmed up. It and, does. You want to you talk through the beginning of Wiregrass? Yeah, we can. We can talk about the beginning of Wiregrass. Um, I had been in... A couple of other bands um, for a year at a time, one called Dixie Moon for a year, and then that's where I met Scott Lale, our okay. banjo player, yeah. and Scott's from over here in Boiling Springs. He lives in Delight, North Carolina right. now, and Scott and I and a lady bass player named Deb Hutchins, we formed a trio called South Mountain Connection, Okay, and that lasted for a year, and then after Deb decided she'd go back because she went back to Dixie Moon because they played more traditional bluegrass. Okay. So, so it's been bluegrass from the get-go with you? It, it has, okay. as far as being in a right, band. Right, in a band. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So it started off traditional bluegrass, and then anyway, um, after those two bands, Scott and I still were together, and we formed with Brad Davis out of Ellenboro. Yeah. Uh, he was our bass player, and... Uh, a young lady from here in Cleveland County named Dee Hall. Mm -hmm. She was a mandolin player and a wonderful singer, and we formed Wiregrass. Um, I don't remember what year it was, but it was nine years ago, so 2011. Yeah. Um, that configuration of Wiregrass lasted for a year, and then Dee had moved away to Spruce Pine. So we picked up uh, an excellent mandolin player, uh, Jeremy Green, from Cherville, North right. Carolina. And we pretty much stayed that way for about five years, um, playing all over, playing some great gigs. Uh, and then we brought Jeremy's cousin in as a lead guitar player, um, Tyler Leonard, about four years ago. Okay. And it's... We we just have a ball. What 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 we're missing a bass player here somewhere? Aren't we? No, Brad. I talked oh, about that's Brad. Right, Brad. Yeah. Yes, you did. Brad yes, you Davis. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. That's my and bad. He he plays electric bass. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And uh, I'm just I'm just tickled to play with all these guys because uh, you know I've been a guitar player in the band the whole time. Right. And everybody else in the band that's ever been in the band has been a better guitar player than I am. Well, that's the whole key. You know, you're supposed to <laughs> surround yourself with better musicians oh, than I'm yourself, you know? I'm just tickled to, to be with the guys that I'm with. And, and y'all have had a pretty good bit of success. I mean, I'm thinking you guys are the busiest working bluegrass band in three or four counties, probably maybe three or four states. Well, you know, when I joined my first bluegrass band, Dixie Moon, uh, Jim Walker, uh, was the mandolin player in the band and, and he told me he said you know I don't think you'll will ever get paid you might get fed every once in a it's while bluegrass yeah I understand that and I said well you know I'm I'm a retired army recruiter so I think that I can find somebody to pay us right exactly <laughs> and I did well that's because you, you can talk you talk people into being <laughs> joining the army man that's you can talk you somebody talk, into yeah play. if I can talk you out of four years of your life exactly. I think I can talk you into paying us to play a little music for yeah. you but we, you know, we got real lucky. We uh, we found some. Uh, Jackie and I decided actually we'd we'd hit up the wineries, and this is before the wineries started Starting. really having a lot of music, and uh, we found success and 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 getting some gigs with the wineries, and then we came up with this great idea, kind of a marketing thing to get more wineries, and it was uh, to have a winery tour and make a poster. Right. Uh, and each of those wineries would have their logos on, on the, the poster, poster, and every area we would right. put the posters out. So they they bought off on the fact that they were getting free advertisement. Right. And uh, so we did a winery tour, and then it became a 
you know, local spirits tour whenever. Sure. And uh, I mean, that's a good that's a good marketing strategy. And we even got um, a sponsorship for the posters from uh, Defiant Whiskey. So oh, see, well, out of Golden Valley, yeah. Man, you're pretty good at that stuff. <laughs> well, it worked. It got us paying gigs. <laughs> you know, I've had two people. Yeah, oh, yeah, and Little King out of, you know, of course you know Little King. I do. I was on his record label. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yes, I do. And and he's an asset to any band. Absolutely. He's actually getting ready to come do the show. Oh, wonderful. I mean, that'll wonderful. be a story. I, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> I, can't, I really can't. I, I can't wait to have the opportunity to put it on tape. I mean, I, I mean, bet so. so. I bet so. I never did know Steve back in the Green Acres days because I was, I was gone. I played Green Acres, a, and I attended a lot of shows there too. It's a fun experience. I bet so. I'm I'm sorry. I, I hate that I missed. I, the Green I'm Acres. sorry for you too that you met, you missed it because I've heard some wonderful stories. It is you couldn't do that these days. No, that, you that, probably that couldn't, couldn't get away that with couldn't. it. No, you couldn't. But you know, it's pretty. Uh, Nothing happened. I mean, you know, it was a fun time and everybody did what they're supposed to do. That was still back in the days when you could you didn't have to worry about your kids playing outside anymore. No, you no, it was that time that was that time I just had a, a girl, Marshall Chapman, who was she's from Spartanburg, she, she's a big time Nashville songwriter. She was telling me of the days in Nashville when you could leave your guitar on your porch and pass out in your front yard and nobody would touch it. You know, you can't even do that here now. No, you sure can't. You know, but, yeah, Green Acres was beautiful. That was beautiful. You're the second person I've had on here that's a pretty good uh, self-promoter. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, bands are, are terrible about that. If they don't have a a manager to do that for them, I mean, bands are horrible at it. We're horrible at it. Well, you know? it's I'm, – I'm definitely not a manager, so to speak, but um, – you know, I think the guys are com comfortable in the band. They're comfortable with the fact that they don't have to go out looking no, for gigs. I mean, it is hard, no doubt. But all of us have have come up with gigs. You know, right. you oh, know yeah. it may be a fundraiser or right. whatever. And and gosh, you know, as hard as I tried to to get the band paid, now I really could care less. But you know, now you guys seem to be getting paid pretty well. Well, we do okay. You know, we do okay. I mean, so. I, I guess that does take the pressure off a little bit, but that but that comes from hard work. I mean, you've put the hard work in. We 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 have a lot of fun, so it's not even hard work. Let's see, there you go. But um, you remember the first show you guys did as as the wow as really wiregrass. As wiregrass. I I honestly don't know. That's that great. Remember though. the first show that we had. Um. No, it's not coming to me. It really <laughs> I, I, isn't. I mean, uh, well, y'all played a ton, so I mean, y'all have played, y'all have played as much as anybody's playing around. I think we usually have a full schedule. We usually make our schedule by the end of January, so we can get our poster made. Right. Um, and we leave a few dates open in case some comes. Know, yeah. Some new venue right. wants oh, yeah. us, or but it's still a pretty full schedule. It, it's full enough to where when we do have time off or if something gets canceled, we're like, let's do something else this weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I know you do do. There are, and that's a good problem to have to look forward to getting that weekend off every once in a it, while. It you is. Know? I saw you guys playing one time. I was playing at a different place here in town, but uh, you were playing down there in front of the Don Gibson in a pouring rain. One of those, I thought, well, it's probably one of those uh, races. Oh, yeah, it was one of the, it was a, uh, Gosh, what is, what's the name of it? Yeah, Rhythm and Roots. Rhythm and Roots run, right. that's it, yeah. yeah. Cause I played over at the Boys Club in the pouring rain that day too, which was um, <laughs> with Justin Harper. Uh, I should have never let him talk me into that. But anyway, <laughs> that was that was a cold rainy day. It was, It w and actually we've done all the Rhythm yeah, and Roots runs. Have. Yeah, have, but and I just remember that one being cold and rainy. It, well, there had been several, <laughs> there's been several. Uh, it may not be raining, but it might, you know, it's maybe cold. Or, yeah. But we've had a couple of really, really nice weather days yeah. over there, too. And I'm sad that we didn't get to do that this year. Yeah, there's a lot of that stuff that didn't happen this year, you know. We were looking forward to the Livermush Festival this year, too. It, yeah, well, you know, next year, I guess, maybe. We don't know. I mean, we just don't. 
Um, you haven't been sick or anybody in your band sick, have you? Uh, actually, uh, Brad has had the COVID. Okay. Well, that's, um, I've known people. My my grandkids were up here today, and both of them have had it, and and they're in. Uh, they were both college athletes, and they were both in excellent shape and suffered with it pretty hard. Yeah, I hate that. But I've been lucky myself. I think I think Brad did okay with it. He uh, lost a little taste and smell, but other than that, he pretty yeah. much said it was just a cold, you like know, a cold. Or it, and that's the thing, you don't know. I mean, it affects everybody a little differently. It, it, it really does. I've lost people I know from it, um, and I've known people that – was nothing with I mean so you just don't know it um so you got a bunch of stuff lined up for this year well I'm just starting on the next well, uh, 2021 yet, yeah. but we really don't know and we'll probably uh we'll probably rebook at all the the wineries that we play at right. um out anytime it's an outdoor venue that's, True. that's where I'm gonna those. try to, to yeah. book first for next yeah. year I think that's the safest way to go it absolutely is. You know, it absolutely uh, is. So we we may have a, a short winter as far as, uh, you know, getting gigs to play out. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that – I'm I'm sure this winter is probably not going to be a lot of music being played. Well, it might be time for us to get together and, and uh, learn some new stuff. Yeah, you know? I, mean, I, I mean, that is part of it. And I've seen people do some recording during this time too that um, – uh, they've used that, although you know a lot of studios are record are not recording. Well, you know, it's, that's close quarters. It is. It is close quarters. I saw. I got. I got. I'm friends with Acoustic Syndicate, and they just went and recorded. They're working on something new, and uh, they went three at a time. You know, they they didn't take the whole people everybody so oh well that's you know, one way of doing it for sure the, they got a new record label and it it i think they had some pretty strict rules they had to go by we may do some live stream stuff this winter you know, one of the things i've learned about live stream is make sure you got good wi-fi yeah it seems to be of everything i've seen with it if your wi-fi is bad it's going to be bad or, you, or you're streaming whatever you know i i a friend of mine, Doug Hogan, and I tried to do a live stream yeah. back, back in the beginning of this. Yeah. We did it outside, and we used our laptop. Right. And uh, it didn't come oh, out I know. very we, well at all. Clevco did did a couple things. We wouldn't even put them out there so bad, you know. I mean, it was it was like ah. Uh, I think the key is record it. Yeah, that's the, and that's then, the key. And then then put it on. Yep. So that's the smart thing to do. It, it is. It's, you, um, you live and learn. Oh, we did that. We tried to even practice by Zoom. You know, that was a disaster. I've tried that. I, don't. That's a disaster. I mean, <laughs> you know, nobody was in sync. No, you know, each person was in a different sink. It wouldn't sync up. We was te- it was terrible. So we gave that up too. And Kevin and I have gotten together and had some projects, he and I. Uh, but um, not much going on with that for, you know. So. Tell me about when you first started playing music. Did you, were you did you always know you were going to be a musician? I, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I came from a family of people that were singers. Yeah. So anytime the family got together, even if it was on a front porch shelling beans, right? You know, somebody would break out singing, and right. everybody else would end up singing too. And uh, my dad was a great singer. Uh, my grandmother could play. The keyboard or, right. or or the harmonica. Yeah. Um, no music, actual musicians in my immediate family. I had a um, my grandmother's sister was uh, Hetty Sue Newton, and she could play the boogie woogie pan- oh, piano, yeah, yeah, she, and yeah. and she could yodel, and uh, you know, on my mom's side there was uh, her great grandfather, my great grandfather, my fourth great grandfather were all song masters is right. what they used to call the choir directors yeah. in church and, yeah. and uh, I kind of got started in eighth grade chorus or choir at, right. at school at Ellenboro and I probably sang my first solo at Christmas time at the Tri City, the new Tri City Mall at the time oh yeah didn't it, I, you know that's dating you right oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> the new Tri, Tri City Mall so that was my first 
solo uh, experience singing, sang Silver Bells. Yeah. And uh, my voice was changing. <laughs> so right in, I had a big squeal right in the middle of my solo, and it really <laughs> embarrassed me. Uh, singing yeah. the choir in church. Did you think you wanted to be a singer at some point in your life? I loved to sing and loved music, but right. I grew up an athlete as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have a, a longer line of athletes than we do of musicians or, any, or singers. My mom was a great softball player, and I grew basically grew up on ball field. Right. So I played baseball, football, basketball, right. uh, ran cross country. Uh, so I really, that was my first love. Sure. Uh, but music was always a very close second. Right. And. Uh, Later on, uh, I got stationed in Kannapolis uh, as a recruiter, Army recruiter, and uh, I ended up uh, getting together with some other guys and forming a, a gospel quartet called Crosswork. Well, you know, uh, Cabarrus County has a lot of good musicians. They, well, yeah. Yeah, they do, you know. They, they really, really do. So tell me about, tell me about the gospel. Well, um, we had met at Memorial Baptist Church, which is the church I was a member of at the time, and uh, it was really five of us, not four. And I sang with those guys for, well, I was stationed there for six years, so I probably sang with them for about seven years because we'd occasionally do a gig after I moved. After you, after you left. And yeah. So it, they became fewer, right? Um, but we still, you know, and then it finally just got to right. where we couldn't do it anymore. And during that time uh, that I was um, living in Kannapolis, I'd seen an ad in the paper for uh, the national anthem for the Charlotte Hornets tryout. Yeah. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to go give this a shot. Sure. And they were having the tryouts at the training center in um, Fort Mill, South Carolina. And when I got there, there was about 3,500 people. <laughs> Man, so it was an all-day gig. I mean, it was it was an all-day event for sure, and I, I, I just sat there with my jaw dropped at some of these auditions. Oh, yeah, I was like, sure. "Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! That was good, you know." Mm -hmm. But they told us to not to not to make it your own. Right. Sing it this traditional way. Right. And they also told us, you know, don't call us; we'll call you. Yeah. So I did my audition. And I came back home and I never gave it a second thought. I'm like, you know, there's all these people down there. Right. There ain't no way they're going to call me. Well, about three weeks later, they did call me. That's too cool. And, uh, and it was one of the hottest games of the year. They were playing the Utah Jazz, which was oh, like. Oh, Carl, was the Carl Malone, John Stockton yeah, era. Yeah. yeah. So I did get to, to practice before everything else. And then um, some of the basketball players would come by and tell me, you know, they were warming up too and right. tell me I did a good job. So I wore my dress blues. So it was, an, um, and I remember writing the words and taping them inside my hat because I was extremely I'm nervous. sure you were nervous, yeah. I, I was shaking all over and sweat was dripping off my fingertips. I, was, I mean, it was. I'm sure. And they told me to stand on the sideline and when that buzzer goes off, you take the microphone, you go to center court, do an about face and start singing. Well, as I was walking out, I couldn't remember how to start the national. Oh anthem. yeah, so oh luckily, this is like a fellow too. Well, no, yeah. It was like a fellow. Nobody was nobody was playing for right. you. Oh yeah. So to my amazement, and and whenever I got to center court and turned around, they turned all the lights off and spotlighted me. So I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> I couldn't see in the hat either, could and, you? No, I didn't need to. I, I'd already looked at it on the way out there. Okay. But um, it came out It came out okay. Once they turned the lights off and I couldn't see anybody, I was like, okay, I, it made all the difference in the world. Is that one of your music highlights of your whole life? It is. It, it would really, be. I mean, I, 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 I'm I not would sure. be disappointed if you said. I'm not sure how many people were there that day, but it was in the Twenty to thirty thousand. At that point, it was the most people you'd ever played for. Absolutely, it still is. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm sure you know. Without a doubt. And the cool thing is, is I got to I tried out again the next year, and, and they called me back. Oh, you, so you you did I it did twice? I did it two years in a row. Yeah. That is too cool. It was very cool. Very cool. Uh, 
So that's uh, yeah, that is really cool. Um, <laughs> wow, that's I, a hard that's a hard one to beat. I mean, where do you, where do you go after that? <laughs> uh, well, it it was definitely high, a highlight, and it was, and it, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. It was a great great opportunity. Yeah, I'm sure. So you know, after I did that, then. I, you know, I, I used to sing uh, the national anthem at some uh, high school football right. games and and minor league baseball games. I've done it at the Owl Stadium in Forest City for yeah. the Forest City Owls, and uh, I do it every chance I get. I you don't know, blame you. Every, you know, I, I love the national anthem, and I'm very sorry that people feel the way they do about it these days. Yeah, that's a shame. It's not everybody, and I know it's not everybody, and. Uh, it's just a symbol of a, a great country for me. So yeah, well, that's um, it's, proud to do it. So when when did you decide you were going to take your voice to a band? How did that? Well, happen? honestly, my dad, I, I, I retired from the army and I was back home, and uh, and I really was getting along with my dad, and then he found out he had cancer. Mm. And I guess that's when I realized I'm not going to be here forever. Yeah. And I wanted, I kind of had a bucket list of things that I wanted to do, and I'd always wanted to be in a band. Right. Um, and I never really, I, I was not a musician. I had a guitar. I knew a few chords. Right. So it was just like, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. So I'd talk to Stan Thomas up at B Sharp Music yeah. and kind of gave him the word that I was looking to do something. I wanted to sing in a band. Right. And I uh, actually formed, my brother's a drummer, uh, his name's Johnny, and uh, we got together with some other guys to put together a, a classic rock band. Right. And we had a great practice place and we got about this close, you know, to, to being able to play out. Right. And the guitar player decided he was going to go play with some play guys that he played with before. No, so that yeah. was the end of that. It never happened. Never had a gig. Never played in front of anybody. Um, and then one day I was looking at a the Shelby Shopper, and there was an ad in there for a, a bluegrass band. They wanted a singer. So that's when I met the guys from Dixie Moon. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Jim Walker and Tommy Neal and. Jerry Walker from Cherryville, and uh, James Ledbetter. Do you know James? I do. So I got together with those guys, and then something, I, I was just singing. Right. And uh, then Tommy left. I don't know the story behind it. I'd just gotten there. So uh, then Jim said, you need to learn how to play the guitar. So you that's, when, that's, that's when I learned to play the guitar. And uh, Jim was a big help. And uh, I had a, a good friend here over in Ellenboro, uh, Buddy Merck. Did you ever know Buddy? Mm -hmm. uh, Buddy passed away a couple of years ago from cancer as well. But he spent, they both spent a good bit of time with me in, in a short amount of time. I was not good, but I was well, proficient. Hands-on help like that is invaluable. You know, that you just, you can advance so quickly that way. I had great mentors. That's great. And I've learned a great deal from the the members of Wiregrass. Right. Yeah. A great deal. Uh, that's, that's, um, you know. So that's kind of that's kind of how I, I just it was a bucket list thing. You know, I started. I was forty six when I joined my first band. That's cool though, man. That's really. That, <laughs> I mean, that's that's uh, <clears throat> actually that gives people as musicians hope, man. I, you know, well, life without hope. Much. Life without hopes, not much. So right there is a is a you put a bucket list out there you went and got it, and that gives other people who's been thinking I hope somebody hears this and go, what Jamie didn't start he was that old you know no I didn't. You know, it's like maybe I can do that you know no I I, I kind of lied a little bit um, at fifteen I got a K electric bass guitar from Western Alto yeah I do know about that yeah and the action was probably an inch. 
Probably. It was terrible. It yeah. was terrible, awful. And, you know, it, I it had a truss rod in it, and I tried to fix it, and I just made it worse. Yeah, I understand. And I took a few uh, bass lessons from Dan Padgett. I know Dan. Yes, I do. And uh, it, I never did go anywhere with it. You know, I right. got it at 15, got my driver's license at 16. Yeah, you know, three I months later, that. it yeah. was, you know, I was out chasing girls then. Yeah, so. I, I understand. So, man, that's just a great story. <laughs> I mean, I... Because, because it's different than anyone I've had. Uh, that's a good story. Well, it's mine. It's, you know, it's, I can't tell it any other way, really. What else we need to know? Well, I'll tell you, I, what I want everybody to know is how not only am I ecstatic about the guys that I do play with, but there's been a, a great number of musicians that I'm – great friends with now that I've played some music with. There's, uh, well, Jeremy's been out for a little while with uh, some medical issues, our mandolin player, Jeremy right. Green, and uh, uh, Gabriel uh, Wiseman's been filling sure. in some. Yeah, Gabriel was just on, Gabriel was just I on I know, the show. that was a great show yeah. too, and I so. listened to all of it. G Gabriel's a great guy, he's yeah, a lot he of is. fun. Uh, it was a pleasure to play with him, and. But, you know, he's got his own great yeah, band, the Jacktown Jack Ramblers, Ramblers, and we yeah. go to see them every chance we get. Yeah. Um, but I asked uh, Gabriel one day, I was like, do you know any mandolin players that aren't doing anything right now? He said, man, call my dad. So I called David, and, mm -hmm. and he played probably the last seven or eight, seven or eight gigs with us this really? year. And he's a lot of fun, and he, he, he brings um, – it's not not only can he play anything; he's an amazing singer, yep. um, and he plays anything with strings. But he 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 brings his girlfriend with him, and her name is Kathy Stout. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, Kathy, I'm sorry um, about your last name. But she got an amazing voice, and she just him he and her together when they'll 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 sing right. a few songs and that's great. And gosh, this. We're just friends with with all kinds of musicians it, over, over there. It's a different know. it's a different group of people for sure. We've you know, Cleve Co. Yeah, Bruce Rhino. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've it's got, a good community. We've got friends in Polk County, the Trophy Husbands. Yeah, all their incredible bands. Right. So music has has brought us to a place to where we've met and and love more people than we would ever had if we hadn't had the music. I agree, it's a community, and people really do, don't really realize how the community is, you know? Right. I mean, people just think you get up there and play, but there's a whole community that from, you know, and, and around here, it's a good community. Everybody is supportive of everybody else as opposed to being jealous, I think, you know? Well, you know, people told me when I first started doing this that I was gonna run into the jealousy thing. Yeah. But I've not, I've really not, I've, I honestly haven't had um, Cleveland, that experience. Cleveland Rutherford County is really good. I mean, I think it's a really good community. Now, we spend a good bit of time at a place in uh, McDowell County. Uh, Spill, Nebo. Spillway? Nebo? No. Well, we've played at the yeah. Spillway. That was a great venue, too. Yeah, it is. Uh, but we, we play it. Uh, Quite often, and know a lot of people through a place called the Back Forty. Which oh yeah, is, I know where that is too. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's kind of a private campground. Right. And there used to be a little festival up there that we played yeah. at called the Back Forty Woodstock. Yeah, I remember that. And yeah, we met a guy up there uh, named Jeffrey Honeycutt. He was in a band was the Catawba Dam Band. Jam band. It, Catawba Dam Jam Band. That's a cool name. It was a cool name. And they were great, but you know, over the last four or five years, you know, just watching people just develop and sure. and gosh, Moses, he's good. You know, you brought up day, uh, Gabriel's dad. He played in a band with one of my ex-bandmates, uh, a guy named Dwayne Parker, who is a fabulous singer. I mean, uh, so his dad played. Gabriel was telling me that, and I, that was I did not realize that. I mean, I knew Dwayne was playing up and living up in that area, but I, he's back here now. But uh, 
So things come around in circle kind of fast, you know, sometimes. They do. They do. I heard you also talking about uh, Billy Constable. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I never played with Billy's him. Billy's a beast. I didn't know Was him. Was a beast. Um, but we actually played uh, a couple of places at the same right. event, you know, right. Snuffy Jenkins, Snuffy Jenkins, the last yeah. Snuffy Jenkins that was held, they played um, before we did Billy. or after we did. I can't remember. But Billy is such a beast. Gosh, there's there's so many of them around here. Really, there is. There really is. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm glad that being a bluegrass musician that we could do this right here at Earl Scruggs Center. You Earl know, Scruggs. You know. We were the first band to play for the grand opening. You were. I, I meant to go there with that too. Yes, we I'm were. Glad, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. I there, meant to bring that up. There, there is. A, there is a story there. We were the first ones asked, and then uh, Darren and Brooke, Brooke yeah. came on board, and we didn't know that anybody else was going to be here. Right. I think it was kind of a secret. Right. So. It was a terrible storm that day. We played across the road here in the, in the Methodist yep. Church. And we played. Um, Earl's family was there on the front row. Uh, then Darren Brooke played. And then we left and went to, over to Newt's to get a burger. Right. We had no idea that the back green room was full of all these stars <laughs> yeah. and Sam Bush <laughs> and Vince Gill. and Right. And we missed it. <laughs> we missed it. Oh, that is a story. We man. were That's like, oh, story. my goodness, why didn't somebody tell us this was happening? <laughs> so oh. we just walked out on all these great stars that were uh, and, and the, the flash mob of banjo players. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. That's, that's crazy. I mean, I knew you guys did. I wanted to bring that up, but I'm glad you added that part to the to the show you know it was it was such a sad thing to know that we <laughs> missed a great opportunity to meet some some world famous musicians that day that is that's a good story to go with that man that's just uh great um what else we need to know gosh i think i've just told you everything that that there is to know you know you've told it in the perfect length of time do you realize that i did there's a there's a podcast listening uh, length of time cut off huh that will people well I don't cut them off I'll let you go all day but there is there is one that people will listen to and you've hit it oh okay good so, that's great. great thank you for coming down thank you for having me uh, if I could put our website is wiregrassband you can, yes, you can. wiregrassband.com yep. uh, we're not just bluegrass uh, we call our our style of music, Americana grass. Okay. And if you Google Americana grass, wire grass will pop up. Oh, that's really cool. So we've kind of so you kind of got that corner that that. Yeah. Yeah, so, I was in a so, band. Mama said that did rule alternative, and if you look that up, it probably still comes up. So, um, but that's cool when you can do that. That is really cool. Yeah. Y'all got um, Facebook and. Uh, we do. We're on Facebook, and I think we're our Facebook's linked with um, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, that's I good. don't. I manage the Facebook, but I don't manage the Twitter right. account. So I don't. Know, I don't know how that relates. Yeah, I like for everybody to get all the stuff um, they can, where they can find you and all. They call. They, they, uh, they reach you to book, book you. Yeah, uh, go through Facebook or yeah, the or right. the website. Either one. My number's on there. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you can't come see us, go see go see somebody. Yeah. I go agree. see go see anybody that's playing live music. Live music, support, support live, music. live music. I agree. Absolutely. Thank you, Jamie, for Thank coming you. out, buddy. Four wheel drive on a rocky road, up a pretty mountain coast. Cooking breakfast on a cold stove, that's all right by me. Got my tent up under the tree, feel the cool mountain breeze. Pass my guitar, would you please? That's all right by me. That's all right by me. That's all right. 
without these things in my life I think a part of me would die These things are all right by me Playing music with my friends Different styles, different bands But the good times never end and That's all right by me Like the trail under my feet Love the fall, can't stand the heat Got your ham, sweet iced tea That's all right by me That's all right by me That's all right I do believe Without these things in my life I think a part of me would die These things are all right by me Like playing out in the dirt, running around without my shirt, a pretty girl in a hippie skirt, that's all right by me. Got my girl now, I'm holding her tight, on a blanket looking at the sky, making love by the campfire light, that's all right by me. That's all right by me. That's all right, I do believe Without these things in my life Think of me would die These things are all right by me These things are all